right. Uh, in video six, we're going to take a look at filling up some of these gaps to finish up our torso model. Well, I have some pretty prominent gaps here, uh, and I can fill these up, hopefully, pretty easily. Now, looking at my grid flow, I've got sort of two faces on the bottom section, flowing into two faces here, and then it transitions into three faces up above. And that tells me that this edge, probably unneeded. So let's delete that out. Uh, and it's going to be okay if it pokes through the form when we see it. And I can fill this up really easily with the append polygon tool just to complete that hole. I've got another hole on the lower back. Well, let's take the append polygon tool and I'm going to do something pretty quick but very sloppy looking, which is that I'm going to fill this all up, all four of these potential faces, with the append polygon tool which looks really awful. But I can come back in with the split polygon tool and now cut my edges back up a little bit more manually. Click to the center, click to the far edge, and that's going to end up working. And now I can just retrace that contour line when I'm done. That's a pretty sharp looking body so far. I'm actually going to move these points out just a little bit to the side and pull them out just a little bit, creating a ridge around the lowest part of the lumbar vertebrae, which will help with some of the shading that we see through that area as well. Uh, my next step here is that I need to finish up the breasts. So let me put the uh, template back on, and I'm going to go back to select select border edge tool and double click on that whole border edge. I'm going to hit extrude the selected face and R for the scale tool and scale inwards pretty far. And I'm going to try and move this out in position and also scale it so it's a little bit more circular in shape and try and position this over where the potential nipple would be. Once I've got this roughly in place, I can then round it out. And from here, it's going to be really easy to use the Insert Edge Loop tool to finalize the form. And again, we're looking at trying to trace this as closely as we can to the actual demo template. So you can see any points that are just wildly off the model as you start rotating around. It's your job to move them back. And then you just got to try and balance that with making it feel circular. I'm going to turn off that template real quick. So it might become a little bit easier to see this way. Well there we go. That's working pretty nicely. Let's go and choose normals, soften edge. We don't have enough geometry here yet, however. So what I need to do is add in a couple of more divisions. I'm going to move this vertex back just a little bit first. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and choose the Insert Edge Loop tool. And with this, I'm going to click across the whole surface about halfway through and make a new division. The first thing I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to hit R to scale it and scale it out because as we see there just isn't enough um, to really shape this. And then I'm going to hit W to move it down because in this case we're really trying to make sure that these are obeying gravity hopefully. And then I'm just going to reposition some of the vertices until they feel like they're again outside of the form. Just be careful when you're dragging the selection, as I am, that you're not selecting vertices on the opposite side of the model. I'll pull this bottom edge down a little bit. And let's widen this section out right here. Again, it looks like too much of what we see is actually coming through from the 
original template. And if we have the polygon count, which again, I'm going to say we do in this case, I'm going to go to the insert edge tool. And there's just so much still coming through this model that I feel we need to add in one more division, which I'll then scale up, rotate just a little bit so it fits, and probably move down as well. And I'm going to go to normals and choose soften edge. And this is working rather well. We just have to come in and sew up the gap, really, which we're going to do with the append polygon tool. So I'm going to go to edit mesh, append polygon tool, and see if I can find some major divisions and cut across. Before I do that, however, it's really good to get a, a good sense of how many edges you actually have along a border. It's going to help make some educated decisions for appending the gaps. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven. This unfortunately means that I have one extra edge. This isn't going to be symmetrical. Now I know from what we were seeing before here that there was an extra division off to the side that it looks like just a lot was poking through on that one side. I'm going to try and leave that side open by the end so that I can maybe split one more edge back up the model. So let's come in and start appending this closed. I will go right there, making some pretty big divisions across the first few faces. And then I can final up that last division. Now here's a triangle. If I cover that triangle up, I then have to get the split polygon tool and cut across the four. With a couple of movements on these points, we can start to get this to round out a little bit. But sometimes it's pretty hard to see from straight on views. So it's always recommended to, again, see if you can take a look from other vantage points to round some of this out. Let's actually merge these vertices up. Merging that removed an unnecessary face from the model. Trying to keep our grid flow here as straight as possible, continuing along that curved section. And our problem here now, as I suggested earlier, was that we've got one additional edge that just doesn't really have um, any, or one additional face here that just has you know, one edge too much. Uh, we want to be able to cut this across and keep an all quad structure. If I cut that across, that's roughly what I'm looking for. But here I've got a sort of rogue triangle in my model. But what I'm going to do instead is cut along the lower edge of the surface and continue going back along the breast. And I'll hit enter. And I can use this extra vertice now to pull back and round out that form. Uh, I can also use these two new vertices again to round out the side. With this one additional edge, I can keep pushing it back across the body, but I think it's going to be wasted in that case. Remember how earlier I had one edge hanging out over here? That was kind of needed to get the contour working correctly. Well, let's change direction here and send that back up into the same place as before. And as every other time, I can always cut my triangle in half with the split polygon tool, drag that connection to the far edge and hit enter, and move that back to bring the form into place. I'll go to normals, soften my edge, and got a pretty good looking shape. So here's where we stand currently, looking pretty good so far. We're really almost done with this. We've just got to do some extrusions out for the arms, the legs, and the neck, and then we're completed. And we're going to finish that up in the next video.